we are going to start uh, speaking about um, fundamental domains for uh, Fusian groups. Think about uh, the complex plane, see, uh, and the action uh, of Z plus Z uh, on C by uh, integral translations, right? So that um, a vector with uh, integer coordinates uh, a comma b acts on C by translating everything by uh, that vector. Mm -hmm. um, the quotient, the, the orbit space is a uh, of this action is a torus, um, and we are used to being able to identify uh, that orbit space with uh, the result of gluing opposite sides in a in a in the closed unit uh, square, okay. uh, and this uh, gives us a very concrete way of. Uh, visualizing and, and thinking about the, um, the orbit space. Um, so somehow we would like the same thing to happen uh, for Fuchsian groups so that uh, we can start imagining uh, the, the, the orbit space of uh, H by the action of a Fuchsian group gamma um, in terms of, uh, of, of of finding some certain subset of uh, of H, and uh, and maybe identifying uh, gluing opposite sides somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the, 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 this is uh, uh, this is uh, the one of the uh, objectives of this chapter to to uh, to study this um, situation carefully. Mm -hmm. So uh, recall that uh, if we are given a group uh, acting on a set X, mm -hmm. uh, one defines the notion of a fundamental set or system of representatives of the orbits uh -huh, uh, as being a subset uh, of X um, containing exactly one representative from each orbit of the action. Mm -hmm. um, the existence of such an F is pretty much the statement of the axiom of choice. So um, fundamental sets uh, for actions of groups on sets always exist. Yeah? But, um, but in such generality, they may not give us uh, any further useful information, right? Like. Um, we are uh, now in the situation where X is the hyperbolic plane, so I it comes with some, uh, with a lot of uh, uh, extra uh, structure, extra, extra uh, geometric structure, um, and G is uh, the group of orientation-preserving isometries of H. Um, so it also it also comes with uh, um, with more information, with geometric information. Mm -hmm. And so um, we would like our fundamental sets to actually uh, give us some information about the, 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 the geometry which accompanies uh, G and X. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to find uh, fundamental sets uh, uh, with ge some geometric properties. Mm -hmm. So uh, to define the notion uh, of fundamental uh, domain, um, first, uh, recall that uh, we say we call a domain uh -huh, any uh, subset of uh, C or more generally of R to the N, which is uh, open and connected. Okay, so now suppo uh, uh, take suppose we are I have my uh, my uh, Fuchsian group gamma mm -hmm. uh, and a subset of H. Uh -huh. So. I'm going to say that uh, this subset D is a fundamental domain for gamma if uh, these three conditions are satisfied. Right? So first of all, D is a domain, so it is uh, open and connected in, uh, in H. Um, second, uh, I don't require D to be a fundamental set, right? but rather 
I require that uh, in between D and its closure sits some fundamental uh, set, right? So that so that uh, uh, maybe D is not a, 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 a fundamental set, um, but D together with some points in the in the boundary uh, is a fundamental set, mm -hmm. and and maybe 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 the boundary has uh, different points which are uh, equivalent on their on their some element of some elements of gamma, mm -hmm. uh, just like in the in the case of a uh, uh, the complex numbers and uh, and z plus z, uh, actually one takes the the closed unit square, and I and to make to for the to for making the identification right and and so it, it would be it's the the the, uh, the 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 fundamental domain what we would call the fundamental domain is the is the um, uh, the open unit square. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, and finally, uh, I require the, the the boundary to not be very de degenerate. Let's say that is that uh, its hyperbolic area is zero, mm -hmm. uh, so that it, it doesn't re it doesn't contribute anything to the area, right? So that somehow uh, the area can really um, be uh, computed in terms of d. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that's a, a, a fundamental domain, uh -huh. and let me start with, uh, let me give a non-example of something which is not a fundamental uh, domain uh, for a Fuchsian group, namely consider the group, the Fuchsian group, uh, generated by uh, multiplying by 2. Um, so, uh, so and, and consider, consider the following set. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, so here it's the, the, uh, the, uh, the upper half plane. Mm -hmm. uh, and consider this stripe, right, the stripe uh, between uh, one and two, right, with a real part uh, between one and two. Mm -hmm. So uh, this that one is of course a domain. Mm -hmm. uh, I leave as an exercise to show that the union of these two uh, uh, shortest curves uh, is zero, that the hi hyperbolic area is zero. Um, okay. And uh, it satisfies this other condition. Um, every element of the boundary, so every element uh, of one of these two, is uh, equivalent under gamma with a different point, right? And yes, of course, right? I mean, this one is um, equivalent to this one, and uh, for instance, this one is equivalent to this one, etc. Right? Um, okay. But still, it is not a fundamental domain, uh -huh. and. Uh, and actually, if you stare at this picture for a while, you notice that uh, in this, the element, the points in this quadrant do not have representatives in this closure whatsoever. Okay. Which means that the function from uh, d bar modulo gamma to h modulo gamma induced by the inclusion of d bar in h um, is not surjective right? so it doesn't have a chance of being a, a homeomorphism okay. so uh, this illustrates how uh, one cannot replace this condition b with this condition B prime, right? I mean, uh, i.e., replacing condition B with uh, condition B prime uh, allows sets uh, that do not lead us to being able to think uh, in terms uh, of the orbit space uh, in terms of gluings. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Uh, now, our the first result is, um, you know, that I I, uh, I get something out of the way, let's say, which is that uh, if I have two fundamental uh, sets uh, 
whose, whose hyperbolic areas exist, um, then uh, the, those hyperbolic areas uh, are equal. Right? So notice that here I'm saying fundamental sets, not fundamental uh, domains, right? But so as a corollary of this theorem, I would have that that uh, uh, any two fundamental domains would have the the same um, hyperbolic area. Um, okay, and the proof I would say is rather straightforward. So first, first of all, notice that um, since F two is a fundamental set, this union is H. Right? So I can so F one is obviously equal to F one intersection H. So okay, so this this equality is obvious. Right now, by the generalized uh, the Morgan laws, uh, the union distributes the intersection. This this kind of a um, yeah this this u this um, generalized union uh, this union um, distributes uh, this intersection. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm here now. Uh, here, this union was disjoint. So this union is disjoint, uh, which means that uh, this to compute this area, you know, I can pull this union out as a sum. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and now I'm here, uh -huh. and then recall that this number uh, is invariant on their. Uh, isometries of the hyperbolic plane uh, so I can apply gamma inverse to this without changing the number right. okay and at this point um, I can I can do some one more thing which is uh, every element of gamma is of the form gamma inverse for ex for exactly one element uh, so, so I can actually, you know, replace this with just erasing this minus one, and and afterwards I I uh, I traverse the same path but backwards, right? I mean now now I go from I I go I, I then I would go from here to the area of F two, right? In the in the kind of in the very same way as I uh, proceeded here. Um, so we are done. Um, Okay. Uh, now, um, suppose I have a, a fundamental domain for the Fuchsian group, uh -huh, and then uh, form. Well, of course, we can form uh, this uh, um, orbit space, uh, and we can form this set, which, strictly speaking, is not the orbit uh, space of an action of a group right? because because the bar is not invariant is not stable under the action of gamma right? but still we can define uh, the equivalence relation that two points here are equivalent if and only if they are equi uh, equivalent under some element of gamma right? and we can form that space and and uh, take the corresponding topological quotient the corresponding ident identification map um okay so so since here this is an identification map uh, this inclusion induces uh, a continuous function here because uh, this inclusion followed by the projection to the orbit space uh, is obviously um constant on the fibers of of, uh, of this map right? i mean uh, if two uh, if two points here are equivalent under gamma then of course they are equivalent under gamma right so it's obvious uh, so we have this continuous function um, uh, and, and and our question our first question is uh, when is this map a uh, homeomorphism mm -hmm. um, that's the first question so so the first problem to to solve is to give a uh, sufficient conditions 
or, su or, or necessary and sufficient, but at least sufficient conditions on D, um, for iota bar to be a homeomorphism. Uh, second, to show that uh, for every Fuchsian group, such a fundamental domain um, satisfying these conditions exists. Uh -huh. And third problem, uh, to be able to compute such fundamental domains satisfying those conditions explicitly, uh, so that we can, so that one can have a, a, an actual concrete grasp of the of the gluing space, yeah? of the space obtained by gluing. Um, so these are questions that uh, we are going to um, tackle in uh, this chapter. Um, Okay, but so let, let us let us um, uh, establish some uh, some properties, okay. some properties of iota bar. Mm -hmm. um, so of course it's continuous. Uh, it is injective, right? Because if two points uh, are identified um, by some elements of ga some element of gamma, then of course uh, they are identified here. Right? So it it is injective. It is continuous. Um, it is surjective, right? Because uh, b by the very definition of being a fundamental domain, uh, this this set D bar uh, contains uh, representatives of all the orbits, okay. um, and in and the, and the points in uh, in its boundary, and its boundary may 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 have some uh, more than one representative of some orbits. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so that's a property. So somehow, somehow the the um, the question is when is this map open? Right, somehow. Okay. Uh, now let us notice something about uh, something uh, about this map. Um, this orbit space is a Riemann surface. Um, it is a it is a, a, a theorem from the theory of Riemann surfaces kind of a standard theorem I would say um, that uh, if you have a, 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 a domain uh, D of C bar which is invariant on the action by Mobius transformations of some subgroup uh, gamma of PSL to C uh, and if the action of gamma on, on that domain D uh, is properly discontinuous in the weak sense, then the orbit space of, the of that domain D by uh, that subgroup gamma of PSL2C um, has uh, a complex structure uh, that makes it a Riemann surface and that makes pi, uh, that makes the projection holomorphic. Right? So here uh, we know that this map is actually holomorphic. Okay. By the way, that theorem that I that I just um, uh, alluded to uh, is is not trivial uh, because the subgroup gamma may have elliptic elements. Um, so uh, and, 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 and and it, it is it is it is it is somewhat challenging to uh, give the complex charts the complex charts uh, around the points. Uh, in the orbit space that are uh, obtained by projecting the fixed points of the elliptic elements of gamma. Okay. So that's that's why that theorem is uh, not quite uh, uh, trivial. Right? Uh, of course, I if gamma doesn't have elliptic elements, that is, if gamma uh, is uh, torsion-free, then then uh, then this is actually a, a covering map. Okay. But anyway, uh, but I mean, but I, I don't want to start excluding elliptic elements, at least not now, uh, from our subgroups. Um, okay, but and now, being holomorphic, this is uh, this map is open. Right? It's another theorem from uh, from the theory of, um, of um, Riemann surfaces. Uh, okay, so at least we know that this map is open even when uh, gamma has elliptic elements. 
Um, okay, now uh, before going into 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 conditions that guarantee that I that iota bar is a homeomorphism, uh, let us give some example um, to 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 maybe to form some intuition about the possible answer. Right? I mean, the answer. Uh, of course, we would like the answer to be always, right? Um, it's not going to be always. Uh, and this example is intended to illustrate this, even though I'm taking a, a group which is which is Fuchsian, right? It is a Fuchsian group, but I'm considering its action not on not on the hyperbolic plane, but uh, on a bigger set, which is um, the non-zero complex numbers. Um, Later on, we are going to actual to give an actual example of a Fuchsian group, uh, and um, you know, and and and, 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 con and consider the action of the Fuchsian group on H, right? uh, and see that that uh, one 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 uh, one can still produce uh, an element uh, an an, um, an example uh, when iota bar is not a homeomorphism. Um, okay, so consider this one, which is again uh, multiplication by two. Mm -hmm. It's the subgroup generated by multiplication by two. Um, the orbit space is uh, homeomorphic to uh, uh, the compact torus, and this is this is an exercise. Um, okay. Now uh, consider this this uh, this uh, set that I'm sketching here. Okay. Um, so this this uh, example and the, this 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 example I um, I took from uh, Bearden's book. Okay. Um, so here here this is the unit the the unit circle, but of course I don't take all of it. I, I only take uh, this kind of three quarters of the unit uh, circle, um, and they and take two times the unit circle. So the the the, the circle with the radius two, and again I only take uh, three quarters of that. Uh -huh. And then, uh, instead of closing them, instead of t taking those, uh, they consider the graphs. Consider the graph of the function uh, y equal to e to the minus x, uh -huh. and uh, two times that 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 um, uh, that function. Right? So, uh, right? And then and then co and consider this set that is um, you know, that I have. Uh, the shadow, the shaded one. Um, think about the the gluing the the, the, the gluing space. Right? I mean, this take uh, take this one uh -huh. um, and the glue. Uh, it is not a torus. Right? It actually gives you something which looks like a uh, homeomorphic to um, to an open cylinder uh, and the shaded region is a fundamental domain for my Fuchsian group multiplication by two um, this I leave you as an exercise it's, it's not very hard uh, so uh, it is not true that uh, that for every fundamental domain, one always obtains uh, a homeomorphism. Right? So one has to be a bit careful. Uh -huh. And uh, as I said, the first thing to um, uh, to establish is to to see that that uh, well, the first is is to give some condition, to give some some condition which um, guarantees. Uh, that iota bar is a uh, homeomorphism, um, and that notion is uh, the notion of uh, local finiteness of, fundam of a fundamental domain. Right? So, suppose we I have a Fuchsian group mm -hmm. and a fundamental domain for that Fuchsian group. Uh -huh. We say that uh, D is. Uh, a locally finite fundamental domain for gamma. Uh, if for every compact subset of the hyperbolic plane, uh, the, the, the only finitely many elements of gamma 
have the property that uh, the compact set meets the image of the funda of the of of the bar of the closure of the fundamental domain. Right? So somehow the the picture would be this one that that no matter and um, no matter which compact set which compact set you give me uh, when I consider all the all the somehow all the translates let's say of uh, d bar on the elements of gamma of capital gamma um, which by the way they they, they, they when I consider those uh, translates they uh, they they cover they have to cover all all of k right um, because because uh, the bar contains a fundamental set mm -hmm. okay but that that uh, that only finitely many elements uh, have the property that those translates overlap with my given compact set mm -hmm. so that's the condition. Um okay and uh, and the 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 the, the theorems uh, that we are that we uh, are going to prove are that um in this diagram star that uh, I am that I uh, wrote before uh, right which pretty much uh, says how yota bar arises um Iota bar is a homeomorphism if and only if uh, the fundamental domain D uh, is locally finite. So this is precisely the condition in order to be able to, to obtain the orbit space as a gluing space. Uh, you know, as a result of gluing something, uh, some sites, let's say. Um, okay, and then of course uh, the next theorem is that um, it is always th or there always exists a locally finite fundamental domain. Um, afterwards comes the problem of uh, finding a, um, an explicit one. Um, okay, but we will prove uh, this theorem uh, tomorrow.